the mysteries. The mysteries of iniquity and why is it hidden? I mentioned another part of this series that this mystery is being hidden and are not telling. Not directly. But this is going to bring out a few things that I've come to discover just lately. See, this matter of mystery, they unfold to us. So now that nobody's going to believe this, I finally can share some of what this mystery of iniquity is without naming the individual that this mystery will be manifested in a body, body form, we call him the Antichrist. Many people have second guessed this you now. Say it was Mussolini, it was Adolf Hitler, and then they go off lady like George Bush, who they say it was Obama, you know. We're not doing that here. And he does, but the modern Christ will believe this, so. If he did know who he was, he wouldn't want to tell, which has come out as a warning to us, you don't want to tell. There will be those who won't believe that what I will be sharing is the mind of Christ, but is the mind of iniquity. Call me a false prophet or something. Now you know why I, I could, yet didn't share it to any great depth in previous videos. But now it doesn't matter. My followers at the tail end of this article or video will explain what I mean by this. Paul the Apostle had asked the question in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 18 to 29 this is come out of expanded Greek translation right hand exposing the left hand catch what he says for the story that story concerning the cross is on the one hand to those who are perishing foolishness but to us on the other hand who are being saved is God's power for it has been written and the president is on record I will destroy the wisdom of those who are wise and the discernment of those who have the ability to discern I will frustrate we are seeing this frustration going on today in the world of politics, economics, and religion, with no end in sight. The hand of God, frustrating human efforts to try to figure things out. We are living in an age of perplexity, meaning no way out. Iniquity has done its dirty work, with being hidden so long that most wouldn't believe you if you explained it to them in full. So that you see the so-called philosopher and the so-called man learned in the letter of God's word go at it. Here what scripture had predicted and predicted it. Two groups. Paul asked the question in the context of this chapter. Where is a philosopher skilled in letters, cultivated, learned? And the second is where is a man learned in sacred scriptures? Where is a learned sophist, debater, who loves to argue? Go on a pal talk, go into some of these chat rooms, go into some common areas of videos, you'll see the debates going on. Where is a learned sophist, debater, one who loves to argue of this age, fallacious, devoid of logic, reasoner that he is? And you'll see, it's beyond reasoning. Everybody's biting the valve on that. Did not God prove foolishness the wisdom of this world system? That's second and religious. For in view of the fact that in the wisdom of God, now this is to the mind of Christ, the world system, to its wisdom, did not come to an superior knowledge of God. They get done the argument and nobody wins. God saw fit to the aforementioned foolishness of the previously alluded to proclamation to save those who believe. For both Jews are constantly demanding an attesting miracle, signs and wonders, you know, and Greeks are constantly searching for wisdom, right? But as for us, we are proclaiming a Christ, 
one who had been crucified, to Jews on the one hand, an offense, and to the Greeks on the other hand, folly, but to those of themselves who had been divinely summoned into salvation, both Jews and Gentiles. This is that called our Sunday of Jew and Gentile with the mind of Christ. Christ, the mind of Christ, God's power and God's wisdom, because that aforementioned folly of God is wiser than men, and then aforementioned weakness of God is stronger than men. Everything that this vessel, naming myself, Paul Woodward, has been sharing about a called out assembly from the secular world and the religious world to the secular world what has been shared is considered folly. Stupid stuff. They wouldn't even want to listen to the videos. And the religious world is an offense to their self will religious ideas of their particular denomination or cult. Those not called. Verses 26 through 29. But take a good look at your divine sons. Take a good look at unto salvation. Brethren, that one, not many wise men according to human standards, not many men of div divinity or dignity and power, not men who are of royal or aristocratic lineage are given this divine summons unto salvation. Those called weakness or restraint. But God selected out for himself those individuals among the world of sinners and lived independent from God all our life, characterized by the foolish, by the aforementioned foolishness in order that he might put to confusion those who are wise. And those individuals among the world of sinners characterized by weakness God selected out for himself in order that he might put to confusion those who are characterized by strength and those individuals among the world of sinners who are not of royal or noble ancestry but belong to the common people and those who are utterly despised God selected out for himself the aforementioned class of individuals looked upon as non-entities and though they might deprive of force influence and power to those who think themselves to be somewhat to the end that humanity may not in a single instance boast in his presence. So you got the foolish, the foolish, the weak, not a royal or noble ancestry, common people, utterly despised, none entities without credentials. Welcome to the club. If I had any, I've lost them a long time ago. And they wouldn't mean anything to those with the credentials today in the sector world or the religious world. What are your credentials, brother? I have none. Other than the fact I gained the mind of Christ to this vessel and surrendered my conscious and subconscious mind to a process of time, and I still haven't arrived yet, and doing it on a day-by-day -day basis, the more I lose in my carnal mind, the more I gain to the mind of Christ. Those in Christ with the mind of Christ, verses 30 to 31, but as for you, out from him, as a source. Are you in Christ? Out of Him. Not your human efforts. For out of Him as a source are you in Christ Jesus who became wisdom for us from God. Both righteousness and sanctification and redemption and in order that even as it stands written he who boasts in the Lord let him be boasting. As Paul later said to that church of Corinth, what do you have you haven't received and received? How can you boast in glory? One plants, one waters, but he who plants, he who waters is nothing. It's God who gives the increase. We're only vessels to which God can work. And the weaker you are, the more he can use you. But as long as you think you can help him out, you're not helping him out. You're trying to add to or take away what he's already finished and accomplished and put in you in the mind of Christ that's in you and for you to allow the Holy Spirit to work it out of you. It's locked up in you. I've been looking into these matters for the last 50 years of my 72 years in this life experience. Now that don't mean nothing to anybody. Time doesn't mean nothing. You can have all the time. Well, it still don't know the blooming thing. 
I've come to see where the mystery of godliness, like this mystery of iniquity, was hidden for a purpose. Let me see if I can make a rather long research short. We know that the mystery of godliness was hidden from the beginning of time from humanity. Biblical text proves this, and you want the text in context, go view my other videos. They give that to you for the skeptic. This mystery of Godness was revealed by the Apostle Paul after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Had they known evil and evil men, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. This matter was a mystery of iniquity. Though we see it all around us, to human history, no one seems to be able to pinpoint it, to really define it, second, second guessing. I've come to understand, as with this matter of godliness, so it is with this mystery of iniquity, it will be hidden because it was, we knew it, it's mystery before God's timing way of revealing it, what God purposed in revealing it would be not be accomplished. Those Thessalonians, good example, addressed by Paul, is a good example of how these, those jumping the gun, thinking they understood this mystery, got it all wrong. We see this throughout church history. They're second-guessing something that only God will allow to be revealed when he allows it. Yet even then, as with the mystery of godliness being revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord, there will be those who will never see or understand this mystery of iniquity. That's a hint of what mystery really is. Here to him. They will never understand the mystery of iniquity. A matter that came up before the foundation of the world, something said to be found in an angelic being called Lucifer. Now here's my opening point. Something equally a mystery. Christ was slain, offered his life before the foundation of the world. See the mystery of this. Beyond our viewpoint of time and human history, and you will begin to understand evil, iniquity, from a perfect view, God's view, or what is called the mind of Christ in us, locked up, hidden in his earthen vessel as a treasure that the excellency be of God and not the limited corner mind of our souls cut off from God. See the real battle being flesh, beyond flesh and blood. Seeing the real battle between what we call good and evil fought out before time, space, and this material world. See a battle that is already won then you will know the truth, a true reality, and it will set you free, and if you set you free, you will be free indeed. And any fear that this video or any other video might have produced would be cast off, as is written, true love cast out fear. I'm slowly developing this in my YouTube videos. Taken from those I've written over my lifetime, as I said, it's a rather long story, but it's some but its understanding is beyond what eyes have seen or ears have heard or anything that's crossed our carnal minds. It's only found and understood with the mind of Christ in us. It is there for the asking, seeking, and knocking. Once seen, as the Apostle Paul expressed, I saw things unspeakable, unlawful for men to speak. Paul knew, yet gave hints, just as those in the Old Testament and Jesus himself gave hints of godliness giving out in parables, hidden until the mystery of God was revealed, as I said above, in the fullness of time. The same applies to the mystery of iniquity. It is there, hidden, locked up in you. Hear that? In you. You understand mystery? Look in the mirror. It is there, hidden, locked up in you. What this mystery of iniquity is and will be revealed at God's timing and way. Can we know this mystery of iniquity? Look in the mirror. If we did, we wouldn't tell. You'd be exposing yourself. Well, man, just know you condemn yourself. You do the same thing. It's the Father's to reveal to a Christ-rejecting world who would only reject it if it were revealed. I say to you, look in the mirror. You reject it. I'm not evil. Who would reject it if it was revealed, having embraced the iniquity, never knowing it? 
Commit yourself, therefore, to God. You resist the devil. What did James say? He's talking about you, the guy in the mirror. This iniquity will come suddenly upon them. We know this much. And those with the mind of Christ or as is written, not children of dark, that this day should come upon them unaware. They know that it is near, has been prepared to escape those things which would be coming upon this earth. And they knew it began in them, and they faced the iniquity of their heart, the iniquity of their parents, passed on from generation to generation, and that they picked up, and they owned up to that fact. Now you know what I said in the opening paragraph that I finally can share this because I know that most won't believe anyway. Those of the secular are sure and sadly those of the, that Paul expressed the following. Where is the philosopher skilled in letters? Call be learned. Where is the man learned in the sacred scriptures? You would know these things. Nicodemus, you're a teacher of Israel, you don't know these things? You got to be born all over again. There's nothing good in your flesh, your race, your culture, your sexual religious creeds, and your opinions, the male and female. There's nothing good in there. It took Paul 14 years to find that out. He's expressing here to the church of Corinth, and they don't see it. Where is the learned sophists of this age? Fallacious reason that is. So think with the mind of Christ, not the corner mind for just one moment, if you can. Ponder this. The true mystery of iniquity would be those thinking they know what this iniquity is when in truth they're so caught up in it that they don't even know that they are. Read that one more time. The true mystery of iniquity would be those thinking they know what this iniquity is when in truth they are so caught up in it that they don't know, even know that they are. Going on, let me see if I can make this short and to the point as to why I said the highlighted statement. What does it mean? We know the origin of iniquity. That's been established in Lucifer before the foundation of the world. We know that iniquity hit this planet, has been passed on from generation after generation, and this very minute is said to be working. We hear Jesus saying to some in the future, the so-called good guys, Depart from me, you who worked in iniquity. I never knew you. They're shocked to hear this. Think they have done all these wondrous works. Why are they being rejected? Sounds like the ending of the highlighted statement above. So caught up in it that they don't even know that they are. Or what? Iniquity itself. So the mystery of iniquity is thinking they had done many wondrous works. Might the wondrous works be linked to the peace and safety? When they say peace and safety, the sudden destruction. When there is no peace, there is no safety. It's a part of it. So the real mystery isn't something evil, horrible as we have thought, but evil masked as good. So all that so-called good that is going on in this working of iniquity that no one would even think that this was what iniquity was. It would make those evil look good and the good look evil, right? That's what, working as I type this, a total flip-flop of the mind. So now, ready to put on the mind of Christ, body of Christ. Don't reject the head, the mind of Christ. As Paul revealed the mystery of Christ in you, not being in the body of Christ, and Jesus is the head. With the mind of Christ, this mystery of iniquity will and is, unless you embrace the mind of Christ, this mystery of iniquity is the body of the Antichrist with the mind of iniquity. Hear it? The mind of Christ and the mind of iniquity. The body of Christ or the body of the Antichrist, the mimic. Believe this or not, this body of iniquity, this body of this Antichrist is being and will be created to what is being done as I type this in laboratories across this world. Another mimic of the body of Christ, often longevity of life, this body of iniquity 
this body of Antichrist will be all being the same and will line people will line up to be part of this body of iniquity, this mystery once hidden to be revealed. Only those with the mind of Christ will believe what I have just shared now. Or they will come to believe those with this mind of iniquity in them won't believe what I'm sharing. They can't because they have rejected God's free offer of deliverance and promise of eternal life, spirit, soul, and body, and will take the offer that will be revealed. Thus will get this eternal body yet des destined for Gehenna, a place prepared for the devil and his angels that have worked this plan of iniquity from the garden to the present day. Sure, they get their eternal bodies in what's called the second resurrection. Another mimic of what God offered. Those dead not in Christ. Hear that? Remember the dead in Christ? These would be the dead not in Christ. Will rise first. Better said, descend. And those alive at the end of the 1,000 year reign of Christ on earth will descend with them to Guyana. This defines what's called the second resurrection of the unjust. The second death. They end up going to a place not prepared for them, but a place disembodied spirits that they have embraced. Remember these angels that left their original habitat state are disembodied. Imagine that. Third torment. These disembodied angelic beings will be them eternally desiring to possess those with resurrected bodies to which this place was not prepared for them. And the torment of... of those to whom this place was not prepared for them will be the constant term of these fallen, disembodied spirits desiring to possess them. This is beyond any idea of hell humanity has ever heard or rejected once there is an eternal matter and an atomic nightmare that will, will never end. So in closing, for those that didn't understand what this article really was all about and would only see it as a rant from me, something I've been accused of in other videos, this rant is a last ditch effort on the part of this vessel to get you to see that you have been working in Nickley for some time now, unaware that soon you will no longer be able to see your own blindness to this and will spend an eternity never knowing why you ended up in a place not prepared for you but was created for these spirits that you listened to and thinking they were the spirit of God. You never discerned the spirits. You never discerned the spirits that you accuse others of along with this vessel of falling, saying I'm following demonic spirits and I'm not listening to the spirit of God. If you had, you would have discovered that the Holy Spirit never speaks of himself and that his teachings you claim to follow were not his teachings because scripture clearly states that his teachings were not his own, nor were they the teachings of the Son of Man, Jesus, but both would point you to the mind of Christ in you, which Christ, the Son of Man, accomplished for you, that we all might have access to the voice of our true Father, and would know his voice, and would not follow any other voice that only mimic what I've been called to share, the mind of Christ and Christ in you. And the only hope of ever being restored to what the first time had cut us off from. You would have received this message and embraced the free gift of God, restoring you completely via a new spirit with the same mind that was in Christ, the Son of Man, thus giving you the mind to understand what was just shared to you with the promise of an eternal body to house the spirit and soul and making it fit for a new creation. Ponder these things with the mind of Christ said to be all and in all. God bless you.